Hi, I'm John, and we're here with the C1 convolution module, starting with some raw audio from the G0 module. A, you hear me? I can hear you too. A, you hear me? We can load a simple convolution to apply to this. A, you hear me? I can hear you too. A, you hear me? The C1 module has controls for both the overall length of the loaded file as well as the sample rate. Like a traditional sampler, the sample rate, as it's reduced slower and slower, both reduces the pitch and lengthens the impulse response. As it's pitched higher and higher, it gets shorter and shorter. Rather than using an audio input, you can also feed in an envelope or an impulse to the impulse response and this effectively plays back the impulse with each trigger. Here the envelope generator can have its decay adjusted with longer decay settings creating low pass filter type effects. So the applied convolution in this case is a classic sampled symbol. Loading instead a different impulse response. We can immediately change the voice of the sampler, but that is equally applied to any arbitrary input we apply into it, not just triggers. At these lower frequencies, the interpolation function is more obvious. Here without interpolation, and if holding the zoom control whilst loading, smooth interpolation compared to no zoom when loading, with all of those rich images of the original sound at higher frequencies. Swapping the input from voice to some drum loops. We can hear the convolved sound. compared to the raw. With a gain stage able to make up for that loss there. When no card is loaded, this switches back into a bucket brigade delay. Again, with a length control. And the frequency. Listening to a delay straight through from the input to the output doesn't create a lot of interesting effects. Most of the traditional delay type effects are heard when using a mixer to apply feedback. If we travel through the mixer here and send the signal both through the mixer and through the delay, and then send a fraction of the output back around as feedback, 
we get those infinite decays and flutters. flanging type effects. Two delays. Moving the feedback, we're back to the original sound. To get a little more interesting, we can instead modulate some of the parameters of the delay. Here in time with the beat, we can add in some modulation of the frequency. Here the slew rate can have a large effect when using a CV source such as this envelope with sharp edges. We're jumping in the changes there quickly. Having them bend gently there. Applying this when it's in the feedback type delay. Thus you can take quite a boring steady delay and just with the addition of some modulation to these. There again. Now the little pauses in there that are rhythmically connected to the source material. Taking this apart, the echoes decay out there. The convolution works not only with these loaded files, but can also be fed arbitrary audio inputs for real-time convolution of two live channels. Here the voice convolving over the top of the drums. And if we add some musical elements over the drums, we're taking what sounds like this roar. I can hear you too. A, hear me? And together, 
we have elements of one on top of the other, somewhat like a vocoder, where it preserves both the frequency and the time. Adjusting the length. We can get right down to at the extreme short end straight ring modulation and then as we add more and more samples to the length of the convolution the shorter lengths retain a lot of the rhythmic and timing information and as we go out to longer and longer convolution sizes it blurs these until we get to the extreme long lengths where everything is just jumbled back on top of each other and you can't tell what came before the other. For something completely different, we can feed the same signal into both inputs. starts out something like this. And you can get blurred right out into ambient pads. The raw material versus the derived. So far we have only listened to the convolution and delay output, but there is an additional sampling output which passes through the top channel relatively unchanged. Bringing the frequency down, there's a hard low pass filter to prevent aliasing before sampling. On this channel the length control has no effect but there is an additional mode for the bottom two to adjust the output sampling frequency and bit depth. This has enabled the opposite of interpolation by switching to zoomed out. Pressing it again sets the light to indicate the mode is enabled and now these two knobs control the sampling frequency of the output and bit depth, respectively, so that it can be quantized in both time and amplitude. Beyond recreating the sounds of classic 1980s sampling devices, this sampling channel could also be used as a traditional filter here on an oscillator. This same oscillator passed through a VCA to create a simple bass line. Here the frequency is just static. But we can also demonstrate the clock or frequency tracking input here by feeding the oscillator directly in. And now the frequency tracks that oscillator exactly. This can be combined with the imaging effects of the raw or sampled modes to return back some of the high frequency content. And FM type effects. The 
because of the exact tracking against that reference oscillator frequency. With a different drum loop here on the sampling channel, you can hear the subtle differences between resampling mode, raw mode. Resampling and interpolated raw resampled. <laughs> 